The tragedy in San Antonio is part of an ongoing immigration crisis at the U.S.-Mexico border. According to the International Organization for Migration, at least 650 migrants died crossing the U.S.-Mexico border in 2021. ABC News contributor Maria Elena Salinas has covered immigration extensively as a reporter, and she joins us now for more on this. Maria Elena, thank you for being here. You know, given how much work you've done on this topic, what's your reaction to what happened in San Antonio but also these numbers from the International Organization for Migration saying 650 people died crossing the border last year. That's just crossing the border. You know, what happened in San Antonio is a horrible tragedy. It's definitely the deadliest in recent history, but it's not the first. I mean, this is just an example of the dangers that migrants face once they reach the border in the U.S. in search of a better life. But they also remember that they're escaping poverty, they're escaping violence in their home countries, and they face a calamity such as the one that occurred down in San Antonio. There was a similar case that occurred back in Texas in 2017. There, 10 people died inside a tractor trailer that had been abandoned outside of a, of a Walmart. There were reportedly 100 migrants in that trailer and dozens were hospitalized. And just like that, there's so many. There's car accidents. Uh, there's also people that, that die when they're in the south of Mexico coming to the border. Um, many of them fall off the train known as La Bestia or the Beast or lose limbs in the process. Uh, we have no idea how many have died trying to cross the Rio Grande. You know, last year in southern Mexico, 55 migrants died when a bus that they were on crashed. So, you know, there's just so many. And then they face extortion from criminal gangs and sometimes even law enforcement agents in, in Mexico. So, you know, some die in the desert from extreme heat or freezing temperatures. Countless others die falling from the border wall. So it's definitely many, many people dying. And, you know, there's some that that really put the blame on, on U.S. laws that prevent them from coming in orderly, in an orderly manner, because there just has not been any any immigration reform in so many years. Now, just yesterday, the U.S. Border Patrol agents reported finding 68 migrants in near Tucson, Arizona. 58 of them, 58 of them were children. How big is this crisis? Well, it's it, it's a big crisis. You know, it's it's not uncommon. But we have to remember that they are victims. They're victims of the governments in their home countries that have not been able or willing to improve the situation of poverty and violence that drive people to, to leave. And then again, they're victimized when they're treated as invaders and rejected in the U.S. So as long as there are these conditions in their home countries, they will continue to try to seek a better life, no matter what the risks are. And we can only imagine the desperation that they must feel to make that decision to risk their lives and that of their children to look for safety or to look for a better life. Now, the Supreme Court is still deciding on whether the Biden administration can end a Trump-era border policy known as Remain in Mexico. So can you tell us a little bit more about that policy and what happens if it's terminated? Okay, so the Remain in Mexico policy, it's also known as MPP, Migrant Protection Protocol. It's been controversial from, from the start and it's been deemed inhumane since it forced thousands to set up makeshift camps in border cities that are unsanitary and really dangerous conditions. You know, the pandemic made it worse, of course, with Title 42 was added to the equation. Border towns in Mexico are among the most dangerous in the country with the presence of criminal gangs. And many become so desperate waiting that they risk crossing illegally and the consequences could be tragic, you know, as we saw with the deaths of the 51 migrants in San Antonio, you know, they fall prey to unscrupulous human traffickers. So lifting this remain in Mexico policy could actually save lives. All right, Maria Elena Salinas, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.